Rock and Stone Miners, I'm your host, Get Good Fox, and welcome to this week's Deep Dive and Elite Deep Dive Guide. That would be for the week starting in March 30th, 2023. And that's right, I'm going to show you what the conditions are for the Deep Dive and the Elite Deep Dive, as well as what I did to overcome them, as well as any special advisories. If you'd like to see me do it live, though, remember, on Thursdays, I tackle the Deep Dives from stream at Twitch at Get Good. Fox, but let's go ahead and get started with the deep dive. Our deep dive is going to occur within the dense bio zone. As a quick heads up, you will be facing off with quite a few bosses in this deep dive, so bring characters who are good at taking out bosses. I'll tell you about them a little bit later. Anyways, mission one has a difficulty of hazard three. Your objectives will be to kill two dreadnoughts, which will include a hive guard and the twins. You'll also need to collect two alien eggs. Expect one of the eggs to trigger a swarm. There's a mutator in effect. Warning, leave lethal enemies. What this does is double the melee damage the enemies can do, but only melee damage, so self-destructing attacks, stomping attacks, spitting attacks, not affected by it. To beat this level, you can counter the lethal enemies by staying basically together, unless you're very good at the game and you're confident with going lone wolf. Stay together, combine your firepower, and you will thin the enemies out faster than they can get to you, because Hazard 3, the enemy spawns aren't that high. For fighting the bosses, starting with the Hive Guard, this is where your anti-boss weapons come into play, so get someone like a driller out who has a corrosive sludge pump and the cullet wave cooker with the contagion transmitter upgrade. Both of these weapons will damage the boss through their armor so you don't have to hit their weak point, and both of them slow the bosses down. If the boss is going at a crawling speed, they're not very dangerous. Another one is the engineer's shard diffractor, which can slow the boss down, damage them even if you're not hitting their weak point. It's overall just a really fantastic weapon, and I think you'll find that you bring the bosses down without much much trouble. For the twins, you can do the same thing, but add one extra thing. What you want to do is try to damage the twins equally, because it will help you negate their healing mechanic, where when the twins heal, the twin with the lower health heals up to the twin with the higher health, so if their health is very similar, they will have very little healing, maybe no healing at all. Anyways though, on to mission two. So mission two brings the difficulty up to hazard 3.5. Objectives are to refine liquid Morkite and kill a dreadnought, it will be the twins. The main catch of this level is that it's very vertical and the terrain is really ugly, it's really annoying to place down the pipes to connect to the, the pumps, and the best way to counter this is to just bring a driller, the driller can just cut right through the dirt straighten the line to the pumps. It makes it so, so much easier. And of course, the driller is also very good against the bosses. There's a lot of nitra in this level, so it's a great chance to restock. And once again, when you fight the twins, remember to try to damage them equally in order to minimize their healing, since the lower health dreadnought catches up to the higher health dreadnought in the twins' fight. Anyways, though, otherwise fairly straightforward, let's move on to the third mission. So mission three, the final stage of the standard deep dive, it will maintain the difficulty of hazard 3.5. Your objectives will be to collect four alien eggs. One of them will create a swarm. You'll also need to repair two mini mules. You do not have to go through the full drop pod salvaging process, but nevertheless, when you do repair the mini mules, they will still give you some nitro, which is nice. There is a mutator in effect, which is warning Mactera plague. This causes the vast majority of the enemies to be replaced with Macteras. That doesn't mean other enemies won't exist, it's just that the majority of them will be Macteras. Something to know about Macteras is that they are instantly killed by ice, they get frozen, they fall, they shatter on impact. That said, I don't think it is worth it to specifically try to counter Macteras in this way, especially because your driller is going to be fighting a lot of bosses, so I definitely would prefer to go with the corrosive sludge pump. That says, if you are soloing it as the driller, you probably won't want to bring the cullet wave cooker, you're going to want to bring a sidearm that is a bit better against against Macteras because it can be challenging to hit them with the sludge pump. If you brought anyone else though, they should be able to shred the Macteras quite easily, and overall I think you'll find that there's really nothing special about this mission. It's basically like doing a Hazard 3 egg hunt. So let's go ahead and move on into the Elite Deep Dive. Alright miners, into the Elite Deep Dive. This will occur within the Crystalline Caverns, and I hope you're warmed up from the standard Deep Dive taking out all of those Glyphid Dreadnoughts because well, the Elite Deep Dive has a lot of bosses to fight. Mission 1 has a difficulty of Hazard 4.5. Your objectives will be to refine Liquid Morkite and take out a Dreadnought. It will be the standard Glyphid Dreadnought, but in order to up the ante, there is a mutator in effect. It is Warning Shield Disruption. That means you will have no shields this entire battle, 
but in return the enemies will do 30% less damage to you. So really the big snag here is the boss combined with the shield disruption. The Dreadnought already does quite a bit of damage, so it's very vital that you don't get hit by it because uh, you don't have shields. The shields do make a big difference. They can allow you to survive an attack that normally would kill you. Uh, this time, they'll probably just kill you. So it's very important you bring weapons that are anti-boss weapons. Mainly weapons that ignore the enemy's armor so that you don't have to specifically hit their weak point, and weapons that slow the boss down. A slow boss is a boss that is easy to avoid. What are some examples? Well, you could be a driller and bring the corrosive sludge pump and the Cullet Wave Cooker with the Contagion Transmitter. If you combo these weapons together, then the boss will be going at like 10% of its normal speed, very, very slow. On top of that, the poison damage hurts them over time, even if you don't hit them in the weak point, making it absolutely outstanding. Another one is the Engineer's Shard Diffractor. You don't need to hit their weak point. It will still damage them, even if you shoot them in the face. It is absolutely fantastic. And this is very important because the terrain is very rough for the boss fight here and you could easily just get caught on something get snagged on something and let me tell you the glyph of dreadnought is really really fast it doesn't take much time for him to catch up to you and then he could just bam just stomp you with his mega stomp which will probably kill you in one hit i do recommend using a little extra ammo if you need it because there is plenty of nitro on a morkite refinement type mission so grab up all of those loot bugs grab up all the nitro go ahead call in an ammo pod remember Remember, you can use the ammo pod not just for ammo, but also for healing. In fact, I would recommend maintaining one ammo pod at all times so that you can have emergency healing. Anyways, though, on to mission two. So, mission two, difficulty is up to hazard five, and a lot of things are happening in this mission, so listen carefully. First, your objectives are to kill two dreadnoughts. You'll be battling the twins, and then later on a normal glyphid dreadnought. You'll also need to collect two alien eggs. One of the two will create a swarm attack. There are two mutators in effect. First, Swarmageddon. This will cause a regular attack of swarmlings just running at you. Very annoying. There's also a mutator for anomaly low gravity. This lets you jump higher. Your jumps will be rather floaty. You will fall to the ground slower and you can fall farther without taking damage. However, you can still take falling damage. You can even die from falling damage. However, it's a great benefit. Allows you to avoid the enemies a lot easier. However, some crazy things happened to me in my mission. First, I found a nemesis, like pretty much at the very beginning of the area. We just cut through some compacted dirt, shot at him, drew him into the opening room, which is an easy way to defeat the nemesis. The nemesis is very slow, easily defeated if you can catch him out in the open aim for the panels. He is random though, so you may not fight him in your mission. In fact, I would say most people will probably not have to fight a nemesis. I also had to fight a Betsy later on. Listen for the humming, kind of buzzing, electronic humming noise that it makes so that you know you're getting close to it. When you do find it, you're going to want to use anti-boss weapons like the sludge pump because it will poison it and yeah, the poison damage will will harm it. You can shoot it once and actually just get out of line of sight and the poison will kill it while you are hiding. It's very, very nice. If you do defeat the Betsy, you can repair it and it will become an ally. Keep in mind that its grenades can still cause friendly fire to you and its damage is quite high so it could absolutely blow you up and down you. As far as the bosses go, uh, first I fought the twins. Remember the key to the twins is to try to damage them evenly because when they heal, the twin with the lower health catches up to the twin with the higher health, but otherwise you should be able to shoot them apart as they are a fairly soft target. For the Glyphid Dreadnought, hopefully you brought weapons like the Corrosive Sludge Pump and the Colet Wave Cooker with Contagion Transmitter and the Shard Diffractor. If you did, then this boss won't be a problem because you can damage it without needing to directly hit its weak point and all of those weapons slow the boss down, which is the main strength of the Glyphid Dreadnought is how fast it's capable of moving and just doing a ton of damage in close combat. Do all of that and you shouldn't have a problem with mission two. So let's go ahead and move on into the final mission of the Elite Deep Dive. And here we are at the final mission for Elite Deep Dive, mission three. Difficulty is raised all the way up to hazard 5.5. And let me tell you, here's the objective. 
Recover one data rack. That's right, folks. It's industrial sabotage. I know a lot of people do not like that mission. You'll also need to collect 150 Morkite. That won't be a problem. Most of the Morkite is going to be found in the shielded dome room with the boss. But if that's not enough for you, warning, there is a mutator in effect for lethal enemies. They're going to do double melee damage, but only melee damage doesn't affect the shooting, stomping, self-destructing, anything like that. Just melee attacks. But be aware that the shredders Rival tech shredders do count as melee attackers, so they can do quite a bit of damage. Here is my big tip. Bring an engineer. The engineer is the best counter to the industrial sabotage. There may be even fancier ways to do it, but this is a very low skill level and effective way to deal with the sabotage. So, step one, stay together. You got lethal enemies, you need to cover each other, you need to concentrate your firepower. The bugs come mostly without warning, like there isn't going to be an announcement of a swarm wave, they just appear. On the other hand, the bugs are less common in this mission. Instead, you'll be dealing with the pesky rival technology. So that means your shredders, the patrol bots, all kinds of turrets. On the other hand, the map is fairly small, so it shouldn't take you too much time to navigate through it, so there won't be as many traps kind of scattered along the place. There's also a ton of nitra, so grab up all that nitra, and don't be afraid to call in some ammo pods. I would say save two ammo pods for the boss, but otherwise, go ahead and drop some more ammo pods if you feel like it's going to help, because there isn't too much of a reason to hoard that nitra. Better to use it now and defeat the threats on the way to the final boss rather than to try to like eke it out and just have like an excessive amount of ammo for the boss. When you are hacking the pods, the best thing to do is once again have an engineer. Engineer is going to be able to secure the area with the turrets. Engineer is going to be able to pull enemies off you with lures. Engineer could alternatively bring proximity mines to blow up the enemies before they even get to you. So the engineer is just designed for this mission. Remember when you are defending that lethal enemies is in effect, so please respect the bugs when they attack. And if you have to, yes, you may need to temporarily abandon the hacking pod in the event that the bugs are really, really getting on you. Now, once you have done all that, it's going to be you versus the caretaker. Once again, the caretaker is not a problem if you have an engineer. Here's what you do. Put your ammo behind some hard cover. Remember that the engineer can create hard cover by repeatedly stacking the platforms on top of each other. Stack about six to eight of them, and you'll basically have this little tower that you can hop onto. You can put your turrets on top of it. They will act as hard cover. They will block shots from the robot appendages. Also, when the robot appendage tries to thrust you with a melee attack, it typically gets stuck sinking into the platforms, which can protect you there as well. Remember that the caretaker can also deploy turrets, and that will give you hard cover against turrets. Remember that patrol bots can appear, and all of that hard cover will protect you against the patrol bots. And once again, you can also hide your ammo pods behind it so that you can reload in peace. And build a bunch of them. Build like three of these little like towers and just put them kind of little spaces almost like you're building kind of your own castle wall and you'll find it's really not that big of a deal. Once you fight the caretaker you will be able to block all of its attacks with the hardcover. The turrets will thin out the various enemies. They will push the robotic arms down. Although the robotic arms reappear, they don't reappear for a little while giving you plenty of breathing room to shoot down all of the different stages of the boss. You can zap the corners of the caretaker with the shard diffractor. If you brought the engineer, not the engineer, the driller with you, the driller can drill up the wall up on top of the caretaker and actually throw C4 down onto the caretaker. I didn't do it in my run, but that is something you can do. Well placed C4 can actually attack all four corners of the caretaker simultaneously. When the caretaker enters into its eyeball phase where you can actually physically damage it, what, what do you do? You've got a shard diffractor. Perfectly accurate laser beam. Just get the angle, knock it down. Don't be afraid to push the robot arms down for safety's sake. It's worth it. Grab some ammo, rinse, wash, and repeat, and you'll find that the caretaker is really not that big of a deal, especially if you use this very simple but effective strategy with the engineer. Anyways, though, 
Time to wrap things up with the conclusion recap, my recommended classes for each of the deep dives. So my recommendation for the standard deep dive is one MVP character, that is the Driller. If you bring anything, bring the Driller. There's a lot of Dreadnought bosses to bring down, and the Driller has no problem with that, with the Corrosive Sludge Pump and the Colette Wave Cooker with the final upgrade, Contagion Transmitter. No overclocks needed, it's just a really effective combo, doesn't really require any skill skill level at all to do. It just works. In addition to that, the terrain is very ugly in the second deep dive mission, so having the driller there to make tunnels so that you connect the refinery pipelines to the pumps is going to make that an absolute breeze. However, if you are going to solo it, you might want to bring the standard pistol, the Subata, instead of the Cullet Wave Cooker because of all the Macteras. That's because it's kind of hard to hit things with the sludge pump that are flying, and the standard pistol could be a better option option for dealing with the Macteras there. So for the Elite Deep Dives, my MVP characters are going to be an Engineer and Driller combo. The Engineer is going to be great at fighting all of those Dreadnoughts you have to fight because of the Shard Defractor ignoring their armor and slowing them down, but it's really going to shine during the Caretaker fight. When you got to do the Hacker Pods, you've got turrets, lure grenades, or proximity mines, amazing as usual for defense. And then against the Caretaker itself, you are able to just stack up the platforms on top of each other, which gives you hard cover, protecting you from all of the gunfire. When the robot appendages try to thrust and stab you, they will tend to sink into the platforms, spoiling their attacks. It also means that you can put your ammo pods behind these pillars of platforms so that you can reload in piece, which is absolutely fantastic. Then you've got your Shard Diffractor, which is great against all of the different vulnerable points of the Caretaker. Now, the Driller, on the other hand, won't be as conventionally effective against the Caretaker. However, you do have the option to drill through the wall up over the Caretaker and throw C4 down on top of the Caretaker, the explosion will damage all of its weak points so that you could contribute in that way, but honestly, the Engineer can handle it on his own. Anyways, those are my recommendations for this week's Deep Dive. I hope you guys can bring home all six Matrix cores. Be sure to tune in next week for another weekly Deep Dive plus Elite Deep Dive guide. And remember, if you want to see me play live, you can find me on Twitch at GetGoodFox every Thursday where I tackle the various Deep Dive and Elite Deep Dive in real time. Anyways, miners, see you next time. Like the video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future Deep Rock Galactic content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.